What's up, corner dwellers? Dunce wearing hat, noobs, whatever you want to call yourself. This is Jade's VR Corner with yet another non-VR video. Ironic. I'm going to go over the most juiciest stories in my life, starting with the most embarrassing first. When I lived in Canada in elementary school, PE was the first class of the day. Great idea, Canada, eh? I was one of the last ones getting back to class after it was over. Just dinking around. So I ninja sped to the locker room, changed, grabbed all my clothes, and ran all the way back to the classroom. We had our lockers in, in the classroom back then. Shoved all my clothes into the locker and shut the door. I was in such a get in a hurry that I didn't put my normal clothes back on. So here I am standing in class in my underwear and all my clothes are locked in my locker with a combination lock. With a classroom full of kids. And my winky poking out. So then I had to use a combination lock to get my clothes out. Right 24, left 15. Run back down the hall of the school, passing kids and teachers. Back to the locker room, put my clothes on, and get my shit together. <laughs> when I came back to the classroom, all the kids were laughing on the floor. Ah, uh, good times. Story number deucer. In North Dakota, I knew this guy that was pretty crazy. One cigarette short of a full pack. Reminded me of Cable Guy with Jim Carrey. I thought it would be an amazing idea to be his roommate in a studio apartment. So one day, me and a friend were in the bathroom rolling a juicy J, and we hear a ton of banging coming from the living room. And not the good kind, if you know what I'm saying. I was like, what the fuck? I tried opening the bathroom door, but it was blocked by the tipped over couch. Just poof, poof. Heard more banging and smashing out there, glass breaking. <laughs> then silence. The couch was moved, and we finally opened the door, and I seen a big wet spot on my buddy's pants. Definitely the piss liquid. Later I found out the night before he was bullying a super skinny kid. Turned out Tiny Dude had a bodybuilding brother. So they came over, kicked the door down, and the bodybuilding brother held him in a half Nelson, just kind of like this, arms behind his head, as the Tiny Dude teed off on him. Just pow, bing, doink, pew! Story number triplets. A couple days after school was let out for the summer, me and five people, one of them being my girlfriend at the time, were in town on a nice, calm, clear day. We decided to drive out about five miles to the dune slash beach sand pit place. It started to get dark and we wanted to get a fire started. My girlfriend had some crunchy books in the back of her car from school that summer. So we started ripping pages out of the books, <laughs> making the fire. Fire started burning real nice and my girlfriend started getting all emotional. So I turned to her and was like, what's, what's the matter? And she said, some of my witchcraft spells were in those books. I was like, what? About that time I looked at the fire and the books weren't burning. The flame was kind of wrapping around the binding of the book. And all of a sudden the wind picked up crazy and started folding each page one at a time, ripping it out. And the sky got pitch black, couldn't even see the stars anymore. You could see the stars clear as F before. All the pages were sticking to the sides of the bushes and just staying there. Like the wind wasn't coming in one direction, all to the left or all to the right. It was like the wind was coming from the fire and keeping the pages just sticking all in a circle around us. Tail of the fire got super high and just started whipping. And it got super hot, like a tire fire. I could just feel my face scorching. So I was worried about my tent. It was about 10 feet away. So I was walking backwards to drop the tent because the wind was picking it up, rattling it all over the place. And I was scared it was gonna burn. I walked backwards to the tent and you could see hot coal prints. Like, you know, when there's a fire and it's dark at night and there's ash and someone steps in the ash, you can see like the lava print. I could see about four or five of my footsteps walking backwards, just glowing on the ground. And we were the only ones there all day, and that was the only fire we made. Super hot ash. Not hot ass. Hot ash. I turned to my girlfriend and said, we're done, finito, and told everyone I'm leaving my tent there and I'm going back to town. So we drove about four or five miles back to town. Clear sky, no wind, you could see the stars. Yeah. Story number quads. Me and my stepbrother Corey and Jared, rest in peace. He didn't die from this, just so you know. We were at the bar and it was last call and we met this couple. One was a goth chick and her boyfriend was a Manson looking dude that had pentagram tattoos on his palms. Foreshadowing. At the house we were all down in Lord Calvert shots and the dude comes up to me and asks me to talk to him in private. 
So my stepbrother kind of looked at me, gave me the nod, and said, I'll go with you, dude. I was like, whew, tight, okay. So me and Corey go to this room, and he shuts the door behind us and asks me if I wanted to have sex with his wife. I said, ah, oh, it's not really my thing. He had black nails, black hair, black lipstick, the whole Hot Topic thing going. He grabs a broom and stands in front of the door and puts his heel on the door and says, you ain't leaving this room until you have sex with my wife. It got weirdly silent. So Corey jumps in, pushes him out of the way, opens the door and yells, run, Jade. I'm running down the stairs with the milk dud basically rolling down the back of my pants. And I could hear him yelling behind me, fuck this, I'm grabbing my gun. I'm shaking at this point and Jared's downstairs. I'm like, Jared, we're getting the fuck out of here. So in this place, it's a duplex. There's one entrance, two long hallways, and then two apartments with stairs. We went down the stairs and waited at the end of that hallway. For some unknown reason, liquid courage, I don't know, question mark. We wanted to see if he's really bringing a gun. Good idea, yeah. Because we figure if he's walking down the steps, we'll be able to see the gun tip walking down and we'll have enough time to run. Turns out he jumps off the balcony and superhero lands right beside us. Thank Bartholomina he didn't have a gun, just a baseball bat. He stumbled a little bit, thank goodness. We all turn basically in slow motion at this point because <laughs> adrenaline. And he's swinging the baseball bat behind us, just blowing holes in stucco. There's a washer and dryer just getting dent. The doors are flinging open. We're running out. Somebody must have called the cops already because there was already four cop cars surrounding the place. We burst out the door and we're just so freaked that we are basically tippy-toe running, tippy-toe running right past the cops. The cops were like, we just got a couple of, we just want to ask you a My buddy's just running while he's puking. <laughs> but we got away safely. Now, the kicker to this story is later on, I asked my buddies, what the heck happened at that house? And Corey said, I went up to the room alone. Corey and Jared were trying to get into the room I was in with said dude and said wife, banging on the door and trying to open it, but the knob was just spinning. They were just kicking the door super hard, just banging on it, they said. I didn't hear any of that inside. Actually, on my version, Corey was in the room with me, with just the dude, no wife. Corey said I somehow opened the door in some kind of a daze. He said I was kind of spacey. And then that's when he said, F this, I'm grabbing my gun. Maybe I was surrounded by candles and milked and now there's a goth slash Manson child out there. Who knows? <laughs> but all right, those are my crazy stories. If you like the video, just frickin' flick it, lick it, double kick it. Just do stuff. All right, guys, blades.